in Substantia nigra. And when you inject with paraquat and feed them with water or placebo, in both scenario, the number of dopaminergic neurons goes down. However, those which were kept on coenzyme Q10 or our formulation, the number remained pretty good. This is the number. Almost 80 to 90 percent neurons were protected. So this is the prophylactic study very clearly indicating that this formulation goes in the brain and protects the neuron against toxicity. But prophylactic study is good that it can prevent further degener degeneration of the neurons. But the reality is that by the time a patient is diagnosed, a good number of neurons are already dead. So can we interfere after that with this formulation? and prevent further loss of the neuron. That is, that is the aim. That's why we designed therapeutic experiment where these animals will not be given coenzyme Q10 or our formulation before. We first inject the toxin, get the death of the whatever neuron, neurodegeneration is there after five injections, and after that interfere with water-soluble coenzyme Q10 or UBSOL QE and see if it can protect whatever neurons are left after the toxicity. That is the simple therapeutic model, and that is what we plan to do. So this result was done actually in 2008 or 9. We, have, we were ready, ready with this result, which was control animals, all the neurons there, paraquat injected, toxic, toxin given to the animal without any protection. Placebo means water or just the solution. And you see the number of neurons have gone down. And if these animals were getting the CoQ10 to start with, like previous study, prophylactic, of course there is not much degeneration. This is confirming the previous result. So this is the new experiment we did. To these group of animals, we, we divided that, that into two parts. One part of animals, they were getting no protection, only water here, or placebo. The other group, we started feeding coenzyme Q10 in the water right after the last injection of toxin, at this stage. And those were this one. And you see, whatever number of neurons left after five injections of the toxin, those neurons remain still alive. There is a big difference between this and this. The degeneration has progressed from this to this level in the unprotected animal. But if we interfered right here with coenzyme Q10, uh, with this formulation, water soluble formulation of both bioactive compound, vitamin E and coenzyme Q10, you end up protecting those neurons. And that is what we are excited about. it. So we were writing this grant. This work was initially funded by CIHR. We were very excited. We will be funded again for the next study. Well, the reviewer said, well, this kind of results look good, but it is not unbiased. We want a, a new technique has been developed, which is called stereologer, which can count the live neurons very accurately. We need that kind of data. This is not acceptable. And we were rejected by them. We also applied to Michael J. Fox at that time, the same question, reviewers were saying, you have to have this stereo larger counting. And we in Windsor, we had this previous operating grant, but we didn't have the money to buy the equipment, it's 50 to 60 thousand dollar machine. And this is a simple coincidence. I was worrying about how to get this machine, where to apply for, discussing with our collaborators, and I get a phone call from a Windsor family, a darling daughter of Mr. Joseph Sachi. And she calls me and says that, actually, my father read about this, your new results in the newspaper, and he would like to donate some money to this project. I had not imagined, generally people donate 1,000, 2,000, something like that. So I said, that will be nice. Thanks. Thank you very much. We, will, we greatly appreciate it. And then she wrote to the email and said that it is $50,000, and that was kind of shocking. Single person, Mr. Sachi himself is a Parkinson's patient, to come out with $50,000. Coincidentally, I was desperately looking for that machine, but with that much fun, it was it just heartfelt gratitude for that family and the gentleman. And I was initially very uncomfortable because I don't want somebody to dig so deep in the pocket. We are applying for the grant. But he said, no, that is my contribution to this work. He came to our lab. Actually, you should see him now. He came to the lab, he spoke to the student. This is, um, though these are the two daughters. 
They came along with uh, Mrs. Sachi as well, who was in the audience. And it was a boost to all of us, a moral boost. He told to the, all, all the young people sitting behind in this room that you are my hope. So it is not just $50,000 that day we got. We got a huge amount of motivation to go on, put our best effort to do something to protect these neurons. So, and Darlene Sache is, should be in the audience. I did register her for this. I hope she is here somewhere. Darlene, I wanted her. To, okay, Darlene is sitting all behind. Nobody can see you. Okay, Darlene is sitting behind, and again, our, on, on, on behalf of all our research group collaborators, we really thank you. And the machine was shown, actually, if I go back, this is the equipment which we bought that money. And thanks to that donation, we work with it, thanks to that um, uh, motivation, and thanks to that luck. After that, we put this project, project proposal to Michael J. Fox Foundation with Zymes LLC and to CIHR for basic work. Both of them got funded, both projects. So these are some of the results from those therapeutic studies where we cause the toxin, we give the toxin and get the neurodegeneration first in the rat and then try to intervene, intervene with our therapeutic formulation. So this is a behavioral result. Dr. Cohen again is going to talk a little bit about it later on at the end. So I would just like to focus on this. This is the poll test, how long time it takes to climb up or down. And these are the healthy animals, not injected. This red bar is paraquat injected animals. They had tough time, so they take more time to climb up or down. But if they were given, after the injection, if they were given CoQ10 or this formulation in drinking water for two weeks, they take less time. Very clear. Likewise, we did one SRT, serial reaction time uh, experiment. Again, I'm not very familiar with, the, with, with this. Dr. Cohen will tell a little bit about the behavior part. But I would like to have your attention here. How many times they make mistake when they go around and, and recognize the object and so on. There they found that paraquat injected animals kept on making mistakes time after time. But uninjected animals, the control healthy animals, make less mistake, actually, actually they learn and they make less mistake. And the CoQ10 fed animals at the same time who were injected with toxin, they were the same animals, but they were taking this formulation and they behave almost like normal ones. And then these animals were, were sacrificed and we started looking into the brain, what is going on. So this is the healthy animal, the neurons present this is the neuronal density, dopaminergic neuronal density in the healthy animals. And if they were treated with paraquat for five, for, for five weeks or five, 25 days, and after that they were not given any protection. This is just the water. Okay. Water only. This is the high magnification, low magnification. You see the clear loss of neurons. But after five weeks, if we interfere with UV sol QE, this formulation, we end up restoring, we end up protecting those neurons. Okay. And this was counted again and there was clear protection. Now, you might find this difference not very big, but this is a huge difference. Remember, we did not start protecting the neurons from here. This is the uninjected healthy animal. Okay? All the neurons protected. We started after five injections when a good chunk of neurons are already dying. And they kept dying. But if you put the CoQ10 at that stage, you'll be protecting them. Okay. So this was again very clear result that indeed in therapeutic situation, this formulation does work in the animal model. That is where we are with the rat model. So people say that what about mice? You should use another model to make sure it is foolproof. As well as why not use a genetic model? This is the toxic model. So we were looking in the literature and we end up getting this transgenic mice, what we call, where deliberately one of their genes is mutated or knocked out. So those mice are very susceptible to develop this neurodegeneration if they are exposed to any toxin. So we developed this MPTP model in 
transgenic mice, we call them DJ1 mice. DJ1 is Park 7, the gene was discovered in Canada by Takmak actually in, 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 in Toronto. He established these mice. So we started with that. These are the various genes involved. Just to focus your attention, we are working with Park 7 deficient mice or DJ1 knockout mice. And we give them the toxin, the MPTP, and then see if CoQ10 can protect them. Well, this is the mice looking at us. <laughs> and we have a different test for these guys. Dr. Cohen doesn't like mice. So he has to establish his lab and make it. So this is the test actually started in Ottawa. Dr. Sikorska's group is working with the mice. And they have shown the same result as we have shown in the rat. So this is put on this and it runs on this. And we find out how many times its leg slip out of this beam. And if you don't believe me, just watch this mice. It, is, it runs. It is not running. Oh, it's going to run. There you go, there you go, keep going. All right. And there is a house there waiting with food. So this is just so this is the essay we used for behavioral essay. I don't have time, and we have lots of videos, but again, we could not get all of them protected and protected. So go to the next one. Oops. No. So this is the result. And I would like to have your focus on this. How many times their legs slipped? On the, from the bar. Again, the red one is para, uh, the MPTP injected mice without any protection. It legs did slip many times in different trials. Now, these two are, this is uninjected and this is injected but protected with our formulation. Again, the number of slippage was statistically very similar to control. That was very encouraging. And then, of course, we did do the same thing. We dissect the animal, sacrifice it, and look at the brain cells. The dopaminergic neuron, again, a massive neuronal death in this animal after MPTP was injected. If this animal was kept on water, neuronal damage was pretty severe. But if this animal was kept on Ubisol QE, our formulation, I must tell you, this formulation was given right from the beginning because this is a genetically susceptible model. So we want to feed this an animal with Ubisol to make sure that its genetic compromise is taken care of. It doesn't have any effect. And protection was very obvious. And with Dr. Mr. Sachi's equipment, we counted them. This is the unbiased counting in three dimensions of the neurons. And you can say very clearly, more than 50%, 60% neuronal loss if they were fed just CoQ10, I mean, just water, if they were, they were put only on water, if they were drinking the water supplemented with Ubisol QE or our CoQ10 vitamin E formulation, the number was restored. This is very important result, actually. For the first time in a genetic model of susceptibility, we showed that there is substantial protection, a significant protection. This is the number of neurons, this is percentage. With that, again, we have published some of the work. I did not put the list. I can provide it to the people. But we did manage to show very clearly that this formulation at 6 milligram per kg per day, which is very low dose, I will be coming to that, was able to get into the brain and protect the substantia nigra neurons against those toxins who generally cause Parkinsonism.